What's up guys, Justin here with TheFusionEssentials.com back with another Fusion 360 CAD modeling tutorial for you. So in this series, we're just gonna practice creating different shapes using Fusion 360. So in this case, I'm just gonna create a simple mount that you could screw to a wall and then it has a hole for like a pin to run through it or something like that. But I really want to uh, just kind of do some exercises where we practice using the different tools to create different things inside of Fusion 360. So since this is a new series, leave a comment below and let me know what you think about it. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so for this video, I don't wanna to get too complicated. What we wanna do is we're basically creating kind of a bracket that you can mount to a wall, but it's got a hole in it that you could put some kind of a pin through or something like that. So obviously it's just a practice object, so it may not be 100% practical. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna start by just uh, creating a sketch and then when we uh, get into sketch mode and I'm gonna set this on the basically the red green um, axis and I'm gonna start by drawing a circle with a radius or a diameter of one inch so I'm gonna draw a circle right here and then I want to draw another circle starting at the two inch point so if I draw a radius right here that means that now I've drawn this with a length between these two points of six inches. So this overall piece is gonna be six, or sorry, three inches long. So because the center of each one of these is at zero and at two. So you've got an extra half inch here and a half inch here, which gives you three inches. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna activate the line tool by tapping the L key. I'm just gonna mouse over until I get this little intersection point on my grid right here. And if you're not getting any grids and snaps, you may wanna activate the option for snap to grid. You may also need to set your uh, grid settings to either fixed or adaptive so fixed would allow you to set what your grid spacing actually was so let's say for example that you wanted this to be every if you wanted a grid to show up every inch or something like that you would set your major grid spacing to one inch and then your subdivisions would mean that this would be divided five times for every major division in this case I'm just gonna leave it on adaptive and click on OK but we're just gonna activate the line tool draw a line from this point to this point, and also from this point to this point. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna trim off the rest of these circles. So I'm just gonna activate the sketch tool and uh, I'm gonna click on, or I'm gonna look under the option for modify and I'm gonna click on trim. I'm gonna click on each one of these points in order to trim this. Now I have a shape that's basically continuous around here. And so what I wanna do is there's two things I need to do. I need to offset this curve outward in order to create the base. And then I also need to offset it inward to create this wall that we're gonna extrude up. So we're gonna go ahead and activate the offset tool. Make sure the option for chain selection is turned on. That means that when you click on this, you'll get this whole circle instead of having to select each segment manually. We're just gonna click on this. And in this situation, I'm assuming we're gonna offset this out probably, we'll call it a half inch. So I'm just gonna type in 0.5 and hit the enter key. So that's given me kind of the width of my base. Then I also wanna offset this in by, we're gonna call this negative one divided by eight, by an eighth of an inch. And I'm gonna hit the enter, the enter key in order to accept that as well. So now we've got our shape roughed out enough that we can start creating all the parts and pieces that we need. So to start off, we're gonna click on the button for finish sketch. And I'm gonna start by giving this some thickness. And so to give this some thickness, I'm gonna click on the extrude tool and I'm gonna select all of these different edges and I'm gonna extrude this down by, we'll call it a quarter of an inch, so negative 0.25. So that'll give me my base thickness in here. One thing you're gonna notice when you, do, when you do that is your sketches went away. And they're still in there, but what happened is this automatically hid those sketches or the edges making up your sketch. So I'm gonna go back into sketches and I'm gonna turn this on so that I can see those. And so right now I have my base created. Well, I also want to extrude this object up. And in this situation, we're gonna extrude this up, maybe we'll call it an inch. And so you can either set this so that it's a join operation, meaning it's creating a new object or a new body, or even a new component if you were gonna make this up of different pieces. In this case, these would probably be the same piece, so there's probably not a huge reason to make it as a new component. I'm gonna go ahead and create it as a new body, only because that gives us more options to edit it in the future. But then I'm gonna click on OK. So then, what we're gonna do is now what we have 
is we have our base and we have our walls that make up this base. And so what I want to do is now I need to add in the holes for the screws as well as the hole for the pin opening. So we're going to start by adding the hole for the pin opening by clicking on create sketch. And then I'm just going to mouse over this face and click on this face so I can start drawing my sketch right there. And I'm just going to tap the C key in order to activate the circle tool. And in this situation, I can find the center point pretty easily. Um, on a more complex object, what you would do if you wanted to start something from the center is you would mouse over this edge until you see the little triangle. That means that you've moused over your um, center point. And then you'd also mouse over this edge right here to find the triangle over here. Well, notice when I move my mouse off of this, I get this dotted inferencing line indicating that this is inferencing off of that center point. When I move my mouse to right here, you can see how I get the blue line here as well. So you can see how I've found the center of this space using the center of these edges. And I'm just going to click right here to set my center point in my circle. And I'm going to set my diameter to be 3 quarters of an inch. So I'm going to type in point 75 and hit the enter key. And so now what we've done is we've roughed out the location for our hole. Well, now I want to extrude this hole. Somebody's going to use the extrude tool. I'm going to click on this. I'm just going to click and drag this and notice that this turns red. So that's Fusion 360 seeing that you've intersected an object and assuming that you want to cut an opening. If you wanted to create a pin or something like that, we would probably use the new body function. But in this situation, we want to use the cut because all we're doing here is we're just creating our hole. So this is now a hole that whatever can go through, our pin. So if this is like mounted to a wall or something like that, we can put a pin on here. But now what we need to do is we need to add our screw holes. So in order to add our screw holes, what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw a sketch using the create sketch function and I'm going to click on this face. So when I click on this face, I'm going to get this top down view that I can now use in order to set the location for my holes. So in this situation, what I want is I want to activate the C key and we're going to do the same thing where we can find our midpoint by mousing over here. And so in this case, because we have our adaptive grid in here, we can see pretty easily that this is the exact center point um, of this space. So I'm just using the grid and notice how when I zoom out, that kind of goes away and then I can't see where this center point is. So what I want to do is I want to zoom in until my grid fills in and I can find this center point. And alternatively, you could measure the distance between this point and this point, maybe using the inspect tool like this. You can see how this tells you the distance. And then when you did your sketch, so if we go back to our top view, you could draw like a little guideline based on your center point to 0.25, which would be halfway of that 0.5 distance. And then you could draw a circle based on that if your grid doesn't show you exactly where the center is. So we're going to go ahead and say that this is going to be a, and it doesn't really matter right now because I'm actually going to use the whole tool based on these circles that I create. So I'm just going to make this a 0.1 inch circle for right now. And so then what I need to do is I need to do the same thing up here over here and over here. So for this one, because I'm not sure what the overall length is, I'm going to draw a line between these two points. And then you can see how it's really easy for me to find that central point. And we'll go ahead and set the diameter of this to point one. And you could also use the mirror tool to do some of this if you wanted to model half of this because there's not a ton of additional work in here. I wasn't really worried about that for this tutorial. But again, I'm just going to draw a line right here. And then I can use the center point of that line to find the center where my hole is going to go. And I'm going to click on finish sketch. And so what you could do in this location is you could use the extrude tool to extrude these holes through this object. But I don't want to do that. I want to use the hole tool because the hole tool allows me the option to add like countersunk holes and other things like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to activate the hole tool by finding it up here in our solid tools. So we're going to click on hole and then you're going to notice what this is going to ask us is it's going to ask us if we want this to be at point, meaning a single hole or from a sketch, meaning we can select multiple holes. Well, in this case, I want to select multiple holes and then I want to click on sketch points and I'm going to select all of these different points. So you can see I can select all of these points just by doing this. And obviously these are way too big, but 
notice that you can set holes based on points doing this. And so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna go in and we're gonna adjust the size of these different objects. And we're just gonna use some of the presets in here. So for example, for this one, I want this to have a head width of a quarter of an inch. So we're gonna leave this at a quarter of an inch and we can also set the distance of our counter bore. And notice that you can also set this as simple. If you set this as simple, all you set is the diameter and then the depth and the angle here. I'm gonna click on the button for counter bore so that I can actually create a countersunk head in here. And I'm gonna put my countersink or the depth of this head to, we'll call it maybe 0.1 inches. We'll do a sixteenth of an inch. So notice that you can set the head depth, the overall head width, and also the width of the actual hole that's being created. So in this situation, for example, I'm gonna bring this down to 0.17 and click on OK. Notice that all of these now have the recess for the head. They also have the size of the screw hole in the bottom. And we're gonna click on OK. So if we look at this, you can see how what this did is this has created our screw holes in here for easy use. So now, all we need to do is we need to round off some of our edges. So I'm assuming that we're gonna want this to be a little bit beveled. So in order to do that, you can just activate the fillet function up here. And we can actually select our edge and add a bevel. So in this situation, for example, let's add a bevel of point. We'll do a 16th of an inch again. And so we've added a 16th of an inch bevel right here. So now, if we were to turn our sketches off, you can see how this has a nice beveled off smooth edge. And so notice right now that if we activate the fillet tool and then click on this edge, it's only allowing us to do this on the inside, not on the outside. Well, the reason for that is because I selected the option for bodies earlier and I created this as a new body. Well, because of that, it's seeing this as a completely new object. And so when I tell it to fillet the edge, it's saying, okay, you want me to fillet this on the inside, which isn't correct, but it's not allowing me to fillet the joint right here. So in order to fix that, I'm gonna combine these into a single body. So I'm just gonna click on the button for combine and I'm gonna click on this wall, this object, and click on OK, and make sure this is set to join, and we're gonna click on OK. So now, I can use the fillet function, and I can round this off a 16th of an inch the other way. So I'm just gonna type in one divided by 16, and hit the enter key. You can see how now we have this object that has our parts and pieces where we want them. And so now what I wanna do is I'm gonna create a quick drawing. So before we create a drawing, what we need to do is we need to save this. So to save this, we're just gonna go up to here to save. I'm gonna save this as CAD exercise one. And then what we can do is we can click this little drop down right here and we can go over into drawing mode. And we can go to drawing from design. And it's going to give us a few options. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new drawing. We'll set the template from scratch. We'll leave the sheet size as 11 by 17. You might do this as eight and a half by 11, depending on what you're doing. But we're gonna click on OK. We're gonna go over into our drawing settings. And so the first thing it's gonna ask us is it's gonna ask us to place our base view. So in this situation, that just means move your mouse and just click. And so the first thing I wanna do with this base view is I wanna change the orientation once I've set it. So notice this is now in here and if I was to click Okay, you can click and move this around, you can adjust it, you can do whatever you want with it. But what I wanna do is I'm gonna edit this view and I'm gonna set the orientation to top and then I'm also going to adjust the scale. So maybe I'll do a one to one or you can even do it smaller than that. You can do like a, you can do like a two to one to make it bigger. So we'll go ahead and leave it as a one to one for right now and we're gonna click on close. So now what we have is we have a drawing that shows this object. Well, let's say we wanted to add a couple different views here. Well, what we can do is we can go up into our drawing views. We can click on projected view in order to create like an isometric or an ortho orthogonal view. So you can click on this, and then it's gonna ask you for a parent view. Well, I'm gonna click on this one and I'm gonna move my mouse this way. So I can now move this so that it's 100% aligned with this other object. And then I'm gonna do the same thing over here. So I can click again to place another projected view. And then finally, I'm gonna move my mouse 
diagonally like this to place one more view. And then I'm gonna hit the enter key. And so what we've done is we've added three different views in here. And so this view can be moved wherever you want it to go. Right, I can place it right here and it'll be good to go. You can right click on it and edit it and you can set it up to be like a solid or an actual shaded view, whatever you want that to be. And then for these others, notice that you can only move them along the axis that keeps them aligned with this object. That's because these are actually in here. Um, these are aligned so that if you were to pull dimensions off of them, or place grid lines or something like that, all of this would actually be aligned. So you could add a dimension, say, of, you could add a dimension right here. You can add a dimension showing the radius of this circle or of these different objects. You can also add a dimension showing things like the diameter. So just by using this dimension tool, you can add these different dimensions in here really quickly. So that's where I'm going to end this video. Leave a comment below and let me know what you thought. Do you find this helpful? Would you like to see more exercises like this? I just love having that conversation with you guys. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new Fusion 360 content every week. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks guys.